Hi, and welcome to the Data Strategy Gurus podcast. Uh, today we have uh, Phil Husbands uh, with us. He's uh, the designer of the 4D DX uh, Data Strategy Framework. Hi, and welcome, uh, Phil. Hi, Eve. Thanks for having me. Yeah, 4D DX Framework. It sounds like a lot. Uh, what is the 4D? Where does it stand for in, in a data strategy? Yeah, thanks for asking, Eve. So uh, 4DDX um, stands very simply for four-dimensional data excellence. And uh, yeah, it gets its name from the fact that at the very center of the framework, um, there are just uh, four dimensions of data capability. So 4DDX is a strategic data capability framework. Um, it helps organizations to understand exactly what data capabilities they need and why, and how to uh, configure, create, deploy, and, and manage those capabilities. So yeah, 4DDX stands for uh, four-dimensional data excellence, data excellence broadly um, defined as uh, data uh, helping an organization to achieve its goals, otherwise known as data driven. Yeah, we, we talk about a strategy which is kind of approach steps and plans. And what I mostly see is, is a strategy is, okay, now we, we've got our map, but how to get there and, and really uh, how to take the steps in such a way? Uh, I mean, do I put my left foot first or my right foot first? Uh, yeah. Do I run at uh, five uh, kilometers an hour or 10? How do I do that? And, and really the executional part is most of the time missing from data strategy. But I think you have a, an operational part in the strategy framework as, as well. Maybe we can dive into that to understand if I pick up something from from the governance part, from the value part, and from the executional part, how that complete yeah. data value chain, how that is working. Yeah, so uh, the way the 4DDX works is um, it uh, revolves around um, three key principles, really. Uh, and those principles are that for an organization to be truly data-driven, uh, and um, as we know, data-driven means data is driving the organization to achieve its goals it of course needs to understand what those goals are. So we need to start with the organization's goals. That's the first principle. Second principle is that uh, in order to uh, use data in ways that drive the achievement of those goals, we need to answer the question, what are the jobs that data can do to do that, right? So what are the ways that data will drive the business to achieve its goals? They are what we know as our data goals. So we've got our business goals, we've got our data goals. And the third and really uh, fundamental principle is uh, that we need to understand what the business needs to have and do to and with its data to drive or to achieve those data goals that will drive achievement of the business's goals. And those things are, of course, called data capabilities. So we've got these three key ingredients, these three key principles behind the framework, which is the business's goals, the data goals that drive those, and then the data capabilities that support and enable those things. Um, so yeah, so data capabilities, we really say that they are where the rubber meets the road, right? If um, an organization is trying to achieve its data goals without sufficient capabilities, um, then that is a great way to end up more data busy than data driven. You know, we're going to be trying to do things with our data that we just aren't capable of doing, right? We're going to be running on the spot, spinning our wheels and uh, yeah, lots of energy and investment going into data, not much, not much forward progress. Um, so yeah, so say so the capabilities uh, are really the, the core focus of, of, um, of 4DDX. It helps an organization to answer that key question of, okay, I understand those principles, but what are the capabilities that we need? And not just what are they, but how do we define them? How do we operate them? And how do we measure the ongoing performance of those data capabilities? And those are all the kind of questions that, that 4DDX answers. Um, we'll probably talk about... Uh, what the four dimensions are and how the capabilities align to them, but uh, I don't want to talk for too long. <laughs> well, no, so leave it there and let you let you come back in. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm the kind of guy of of examples which most of the time speaks a bit more to the mind of the people. If you if you're referring to the data capability, what what would that be, and which kind of business capability or business value can you create from that lowest level of a data capability? Uh, yeah, can sure. you dive into that a bit more in depth? Yeah, so, so yeah, diving into the framework a little bit more now. So those four dimensions are data value, data compliance, data governance, and data operations. And uh, this is one key point which um, often gets data and business leaders sort of going, hmm, that's really interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a really interesting point. And the point is, is that 
every single thing that any business in any sector anywhere in the world needs to do with its data falls into one of those four categories. And those things, of course, are what we know as data capabilities. Like I said, that's a really interesting point. If you just sort of stop and think about that for a moment and realize that, yeah, that's that's true, right? There's everything that any business needs to do with or to its data falls into just one of those four categories. That realization, that fact, um, directly benefits one key challenge that all organizations have, which is, okay, we're going to have a data strategy, but data is, as you and I have talked about in the past, Steve, you know, it's inescapably complex as a, as a subject area. How can we keep this simple? How can we create a data strategy that doesn't um, blindside people in the business who don't need the detail and doesn't alienate uh, people in leadership roles who we need to get behind this? I need to, I need to make this simple. So that's possible when we realize that, okay, there's only four, four areas of capability. Uh, what 4DDX also does, of course, is take capabilities in each of those four areas and then through four layers builds increasing levels of detail on them. So at the same time as being very simple, we can also be very, very comprehensive and detailed and believable and implementable. And that's really one of the key objectives, one of the key uh, benefits of 4DDX is that all within one framework, we can appeal to all audiences and all scenarios. We can keep things very, very simple. We can keep things, you know, really quite detailed and compre- or make things detailed and comprehensive. So those four dimensions say data value, data compliance, data governance, and data operations. Um, I just uh, mentioned what uh, they all mean. Uh, so first of all, we say start with data value, right? Um, I talked about those principles a moment ago. We need to understand what goals data needs to drive us towards. That's what data-driven means. So what are the business goals? Uh, what are the data goals that, that will deliver those uh, business goals? Essentially, what does data value look like? So we need to have some capabilities that answer those questions and also ensure that we are seeing data value. The second dimension uh, is data compliance. So data compliance capabilities. And uh, the point here is that whilst we want to make sure we see value first, we want to put our eyes on the prize, We don't want to take a single step in that direction until we've made sure that we're safe, right? Lots of risks around data these days, security, uh, security, privacy, all these kind of things. We need to make sure that business is safe, our people are safe, our customers and suppliers are safe from all these data risks. So data compliance is the second dimension. Then the third dimension, data governance. So what we're saying now is we know what data value looks like. We know how to be safe in achieving that value. Now we need to make sure that data are up to the jobs that we need them to do. We need to make sure that they are performant enough. So um, all the usual dimensions of data quality, the data are available, the data are accurate, the data are relevant, all this sort of stuff. So that's data governance. And then that final fourth dimension is data operations. So this is where we look at all of the things in what we could describe as the engine room, right? So infrastructure, architecture, organization structure, operating model, all of these things that we fundamentally need as a business in order to operate cost effectively and efficiently and never end up data busy, more data busy than data driven. So those are, those are how the four dimensions in uh, 4DDX works. Um, as you said, you know, we can start to dive into each of those dimensions and, and get into some examples. But again, I'll, I'll um, stop for a moment and just let you chime. <laughs> so <laughs> this isn't just me talking. <laughs> No, but I, I, I'll leave you explaining all the all the various uh, facets uh, from from the framework uh, as such. Um, yeah, it's 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 about the operational part, and and what I see as well is you can move at the four dimensions at the same time, and it's not I have to fulfill all the all the four dimensions like compliance, the operational part at the same time to make steps forward in, in such a way. Uh, I always compare it to a well-known uh, framework, the DMBOG, the Data Management Bo- Body of Knowledge. And, and I've been talking to a lot of, of uh, data uh, architects, data experts in the field as well, and seeing why is DMBOG not working as such in such a way. It's, it's a direction, it's a guideline, it's a radar for a lot of companies to understand what it's all about, about data management, which facets do you need to fulfill to get there. But the executional part, that's that's... Very well. That's missing from the embark. Uh, talking from from UK based experts that yeah. are really the, the founders in the DMBOC as such. And and this is where I find in the in the 4D DX framework you have that operational part where you say okay we start from the strategy level the compliance level but it's all connected together to make it operational to make it executionable. And I think that's that's where comes the the value from if you apply the framework in in, in such a way. 
you yeah. said let's let's dive into one of the examples maybe we can highlight uh, one of these uh, examples from the operational part and then tie that into really the compliance part and and the data value part yeah yeah absolutely so um yeah thanks for mentioning uh dmboc um yeah there's also uh things like dcam uh which of course you know we're, we're yeah. very aware of you know i've used dcam uh in the past um and it's probably worth mentioning that of course 4ddx isn't intended to uh um sort of replace or, or compete with with any of these things um the you know dmboc is, is yeah just fantastically uh detailed isn't it you know i mean it's it, it as is what it says is it's a body of knowledge you know, an excellent source of you know reference and um uh and, and knowledge and, and and important information for for um lots of uh, you know data management roles so i use, use it myself quite a bit but you know what 4ddx is all about is simplify simplify and accelerate right so um alongside the the level of detail and things like dmboc i think like you just uh, mentioned really Eve, you know how can we Put a lens on what we as an organization need to do and be as a business uh, with and around data in order for us to be uh, successful in, in becoming data driven and yeah not data busy so um yeah that, that's absolutely what what 4ddx is is all about um so examples uh yeah I mean, if we just go around the, the four dimensions and, and just touch on a few examples so um if we look in the data value uh, dimension. Uh, some of the capabilities there are things like data science and analytics, data commercialization, uh, information governance is one in there as well, which is all about making sure that we're not just having high quality data flowing into insights and analytics, but those insights and analytics themselves are also aligned to some information quality standards and we have a single version of the truth, all this sort of stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, another capability in the data value uh, dimension is, of course, uh, data strategy as well. You know, uh, do we as an organization have a data strategy and does it does it uh, tell us the things that we need to know to you know, get on the right trajectory and to, to stay on that on that on that trajectory? Um, so. So, yeah, those are kind of capabilities you find in uh, the data value dimension. The challenges that they answer uh, are things like um Fundamentally, knowing what data value looks like, and this is it's interesting to me how often businesses um, still find themselves asking the question, well, um, what are our data goals? You know, I talk about those principles earlier, you know, know your business goals, know your data goals, and then have the right data capabilities. Yeah, still... I wouldn't still say often, but but not it's not it's not uncommon for me to to have a business leader say to me, "Look, that makes complete sense. Thank you. Of course, it makes sense." But actually, what are our data goals? You know, answering that question of what jobs do we need our data to do that that's actually proving more difficult to answer than we expected, right? So um, that's something that the capabilities in the data value dimension answers. Uh, we say that data value at the most basic level comes in three forms. You learn from data through insights and analytics and data science. You work better through data, so things like RPA and AI, um, or you sell data, data commercialization, data itself or data products. Um, so that's what the capabilities in that dimension dig into is, is yeah, um, how do we understand what data value looks like? How do we define that in, in deliverable terms? And then how do we monitor and measure um, how uh, successfully data is delivering on those, those use cases that we build around the data? And then in data compliance, uh, probably um, just for, for, for speed, I guess, really cover data compliance, data governance at the same time, because there's a yeah. similar um, sort of construction to the capabilities there, which is about um, having a framework first. You know, when we think about what we as a business need to do uh, to data to make sure that they comply, not just with external regulations, but with also internal standards. So things like architectural standards that we put around the data. We need a framework of how that's going to work. It's not enough just to come up with um, uh, issues or, or exceptions or, or, or data or data compliance risks. We need to have uh, the, the people and the, um, uh, have the right, people in the right roles with the right skills uh, and the right workflows in place to ensure that we can respond to that awareness of uh, where we where we where we are on a, a scale of compliance. And of course, uh, as I mentioned. There's a similar situation with data governance. You know, we recognise that in order to govern how we behave with data as a business, we need to put some policy around that. We need to have the procedures. We need to have you know, data quality management controls. 
And again, that, that necessitates a framework um, that we can, we can lean on and we can use to do that. So that's what you find in those two areas is um, sort of explanations really of what a data compliance and data governance framework looks like, uh, what they need to contain, how they need to be used, and then uh, the kind of checks and balances that need to be maintained on them to make sure that we're not just doing a sort of fire and forget, you know, we're keeping tabs on how this is working. And then finally, in data operations, um, yeah, that's when you find, uh, where you find capabilities around, of course, things like infrastructure architecture, but also things like data operating charter, uh, you know, having the capability of being able to describe to everyone in the organization um, what the data engine room looks like, um, you know, and how it works, um, and being able to um, deliver a data service. So that's another capability within data operations. Um, we often say that ideally for data consumers, so people using data in the business, their experience needs to be as straightforward and as easy as consuming other IT enabled services like email. You know, you can imagine a situation if every time someone wanted to send an email, they needed to go and sign up to a, to a you know, cloud based email provider and set up an account. So, so we, we wouldn't put up with that with something as basic or as, as essential as sending an email. So, why do we put up with a situation where to get access to data, I need to you know, log on to a tool and then, you know, subscribe to a, to a, to a, you know, set of queries and all this sort of stuff. You know, we need to, you know, I appreciate the two things are very, very different, but metaphorically, you know, as a, as an IT function, we should be, uh, defining and then delivering a data service to the business. So this is, it's easy for the business to, to, to use data. So yeah, those are the kind of uh, capabilities that you find in the, uh, in the data operations dimension. Yeah, I'm quite happy that you say data as a service and not an API service, which most of the time goes that direction. So people still have a technical interface towards the data. As, as from a business perspective, I couldn't care less about, about the technical implication. It's good that I understand how complex it is or complicated it is to get the data from the source into it so I can build an understanding of, of, of how much time it takes and that I can't uh, ask the world uh, for some certain insights and, and there is more involved in that. But it helps you in, in, in being the sparing partner from the technical part together with the business and then find the budgets to really realize that, that, uh, that value within the the business as such. Yeah. We've been talking about uh, the four dimensions of, of the 4D DX uh, framework uh, because we almost know it by heart, the complete framework. But there is, there is a tool out there that, that you open sourced it or a common uh, creative license. Uh, I don't don't recall anymore how you put it uh, available to everybody. So maybe that's that's something nice to, to share to the people how they can get to that framework and take benefit from it as well. Yeah, thanks, Eve. So you're right, of course. Um, 4DDX, the framework and all of its content is distributed under a Creative Commons license, uh, which basically means that it's perf uh, entirely free for anybody to access and use uh, for, for non-commercial use. Uh, we do have some partners, and 7W Data is, uh, is one of them, of course, that uh, is able to, to use uh, 4DDX uh, in its own uh, services. But um, yeah, I think the, the key point is, is that if you're um, you know, a CDO, CIO, head of data, data manager, even, you know, data product, uh, project manager or data product manager as well, data program manager. If you're in any sort of role where you need to answer questions about what kind of data capabilities does our organization need to have? What do those capabilities look like? How should they be configured? And how do I uh, package this information up and communicate it in and through things like a data strategy um, or um, uh, a, uh, a data capability development roadmap, all of these things that a business needs to get on the right track. Uh, yeah, that's 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 what 4DDX is for, and as I say it's 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 freely available. Uh, the address uh, to go and access it is very very simply uh, 4DDX dot app, um, and that will take you straight into uh, 4DDX in Miro. So uh, 4DDX is um, uh, sort of published and, and distributed in Miro. Uh, the reason we do that is because, well, yeah, we, we love Miro anyway. Miro is a great tool for just putting a load of information on a, on a page, resources around it. It just works really, really well. Um, but it also means that um, if you want to take your own uh, private copy of 4DDX, and there's links uh, in uh, 4DDX uh, to show you how to do that, 
Uh, it means you can take that copy and then use the functionality of Miro to do things like um, assign the, um, uh, the development of each capability in the framework to a particular person in your business, put uh, deadline dates against it, record the status of that capability. Um, there's also, um, uh, again, you'll find this linked in, in 4DDX and you go to 4DDX.app. There's a spreadsheet version of it in Google Sheets, which you can use uh, to capture uh, things like data capability maturity scores. So by surveying the, the people in your organization, you can capture scores for target state and current state strength of each of the capabilities in the framework and then run your own uh, data capability maturity assessment. So, um, yeah, uh, it's all there at uh, 4ddx.app. Yeah, so data-driven insights on the data uh, strategy framework. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's interesting to follow up on, on the data maturity and how far you are in your uh, data journey. And you've built that amazing tool. So 4ddx.app, uh, get the, the, the Miro board, uh, get your assignments in there, your project management, and, and really uh, become data-driven and get your uh, value out of your data. Uh, Phil, it was very nice talking to you uh, once again and uh, maybe see you on the next time. Yeah, fantastic to chat with you as well, Eve, as always. Thanks very much.